All right, guys, so today is move-in day at the sanctuary. We're so excited, but somebody is not super duper excited. Well, he seems fine. It's Loveland who's hiding. I don't don't mind the mess, but she's not <laughs> happy. She's, I don't know how you're gonna get that um, wild one out. We'll get him. He's gone into full feral beast mode. So, um, one minute back in Plum Grove and he's, um, Back into feral beast mode again. Finn, are you being a feral beast? Yes. Don't make him do that to me. Sorry, Bubby. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna. Just, it's okay, it's okay. He needs time. It's okay. I know it seems awful right now, but just wait and see this compared to in a few days when he's used to his new home. He'll okay. be so happy. You say. 430 right now. We got a convoy of cars plus a U-Haul with all of our stuff. So we're going to begin the moving, the transporting process from the vehicles to the house right about now. 5.42 p.m. right now. We moved everything in. Me and Megan are going to feed up first and then we will kind of sort through all our stuff in the house later. But first things first, animals got to eat, right? You're doing great. Very calm today. It is very Nobody's calm. Nobody's running around acting crazy. So that may be Dan, you know, he got a little rowdy there a second ago. No, he's good. So it's Meg's first night over here, living on Monroe Hill. We're moved in, it's about 8.30 and She's in awe of just how many cats there are everywhere. There's one staring at her right here, one staring at her right there. There's another one staring at her from over there, one staring at her from on the ground right there. Just so many kitties everywhere. We passed by three or four on the way here, so just kitties galore. I'm... All right, about 8.45, 9 p.m. right now. All of the animals have been fed. The waters are good. Every animal is well off. And this is just funny to me. What'd you say, Bubby? I said, I don't think that's exactly where Jamie wanted them to roost. I'm pretty sure I don't, she wanted them to roost in the stall. I don't think it's where Jamie wanted them to roost. She wanted them to roost in the stall. Sitting on the, the, <laughs> There's like two of them. Two, two of them have taken look, the liberty. Look, look, and then there's some down there. So I'm going to disturb them. <laughs> because I'm going to touch one of oh, these. Oh my goodness. I've wanted to touch one of well, these for I guess, so long. I don't think it's where Jamie wanted them to roost. That's funny. Oh, did you hold it? Bubby, you got it. Oh my goodness, you got it. She got it. She got a yellow one. Wow. Hi. Hi. I love you so much. I want to hold. Is that one one of the lavender ones? I think it is. Yes, it That's is. the one I want to hold. I think they feel the same, Bubby. No, I just, it's purple and I need to hold it. Oh, you're going to say it's personal. I was like, what? Oh, <laughs> oh no. Careful. Yep. Oh, great. That's a seat that I got to sit on to do tractor work. <laughs> Thanks, guys. so much like so nice they're younger and so i think that if you can just get them tame and get them accustomed to being interacted with at a young age i think my dad and jamie did do that a good amount they just being in the stall with them they're not as like fearful of being held or, or fearful of people Hi. so my dad and jamie set us up for success with Hi, these guys little baby hello Hi. I much friendlier you. than our last set of chickens i love you so much <laughs> All right, guys, about 10 p.m. right now. Probably my last check-in for the night. It's been a really successful first day. We got all of our stuff moved in. I got some of it right here. I'm, I sorted through some of it, but we'll finish the rest maybe tomorrow. Playing just some Xbox, relaxing, and look who came and joined us. The sweet Finny Kitty. Hey, buddy. Hey, little love bug. That's what we call him is the little love bug. He's our little love bug. He's so sweet. He finally seems to be getting used to the new house. It took a lot. Hey, whoa, right when I said it, he tried to bite me. Ooh. It's that dang phone again, guys. He really was being so he sweet. Was I, so fun. He was being so sweet until I brought the dang phone and I gotta stop with the phone. But anyways, he came out from his hiding spot. 
he getting you to the new house and so been a really successful really blessed first night i will check in with y'all in the morning and we'll see if y'all are impressed with the time i wake up at may not be noon <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are awake. We're up and at them. It's about 9, 15, 9, 20 a.m., something like that. Let's see how the sanctuary looks at this time of morning. We got Annie and Ernie right here out front. The donkeys. Wow, look at that. What are Imogen and Dan doing over there hanging with the geese by the pond area? I never see them over there. I wonder what makes them go over there in the early morning. Interesting. And who could forget to let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Ooh. Ooh. Hey, buddy. What's up, little dog? Oh, you so excited? You getting let out a Oh, gosh. I didn't even see that goose right there. Hey. Not to the goose, guys. Don't mess with that goose. It's just a sweet little, sweet little mama. I don't even, probably laying on some eggs. Hmm. It's a really good hiding spot, actually. Nothing can really get in there and get you very easily with all the pointy bushes. That was actually a really smart spot that that goose chose to kind of take refuge in. Okay, next. Hi, gunpowder. Next up is love gunpowder. Can't ever go too long without doing that, or she'll let you know. I have an idea for a system that I want to put in place. My idea is to do one significant chore per day. There's a lot of things that gotta be done around here. And so if you kind of procrastinate them and put them off, then you'll end up having a miserable and busy day whenever it comes time to do all your chores. And so I kind of, I work better at a slow pace. I'm sure y'all have learned that by now. So I, I feel like if I do one significant chore per day, then that'll make it to where I never have a day where at least not very often, I won't have many days to where for just 18 hours straight, I'm consumed and exhausted doing stuff. I wanna be able to, I'm starting this lifestyle so young, I'm only 23. I wanna be able to endure for the long haul and be able to preserve my body and my sanity for as long as possible, you know? Oh, look at that. Uh oh, look who's here. <laughs> Cornholio saw me doing waters and he's like, oh, it's a chance to get him. <laughs> chance to strike chance to strike for blood you know they say cornholio likes water so let's find out wow jimmy wasn't kidding he likes it all right bad news guys i can't mow the lawn i can't mow the grass in the back and the reason why is because I just went looking for the lawn mower and it was nowhere to be found. So I texted my dad and asked him if he took it anywhere. And he said that, yes, he went to get it serviced because the blades were kind of dull. So I don't have a lawn mower to mow the lawn with. That means that OLE is gonna have to find something different to do. I would hate not to do a significant job. By the way, let me clarify that. I'm sure most of you already know what I mean, but when I say one significant chore per day, I don't mean just doing only one thing the entire day and then just going back inside the rest of the day. What I mean is, is like, let's put it this way, like food and water are the two priorities, the two biggest things that gotta be done every single day. We'll call those like tier one because those are like of the utmost importance that you cannot go without doing especially the water part of it, as you know. But everything else, like let's say dragging the pastures to get the poop gone, um, bleaching the troughs, mowing the lawn, all that kind of stuff, that's like tier two. It's still very important, has to be done frequently, but it doesn't have to be done 24 seven, like every single day. So I'm trying to find, let's say one tier two task per day to keep things going smoothly around here. That's a good pace that I would work at. And if I can't mow, I was excited to mow actually. So if I can't mow, I'll have to find something different. So give me a moment, I'll get back to you. All right guys, today I just found what we're gonna do. So you look at our driveway, it's a beautiful driveway. You got grass going down the middle, you got gravel on either side, typical country road, right? Little canopy of trees up top, looks good. Then you get over here and you see a few things like this. 
It may not look like much, just a little puddle of water, a little bit of mud right here, a little bit of mud in certain spots. But let me be the first to tell you that if you let things like this get out of hand, if you leave them unattended for too long, then they'll turn into the biggest, most massive potholes of all time. And trust me, I live in Plum Grove. I would know a thing or two about massive potholes. Just a flat tire waiting to happen. So we're going to be on the extremely proactive side of things today. And instead of waiting for disaster to strike, instead of waiting for disaster to strike, we're going to punch disaster right in the mouth and prevent it from ever happening. So the job's really simple. Tractor, gravel, pour it, smooth it out. Done. Let's go. All right, folks, let's go ahead and get ready. Whoa, never mind. I will be back. Now that right there, that's better. <laughs> I'll go ahead and scrub this thing down a little bit later. But for now, let's get going. gentlemen i just took the final steps and kind of smoothing it all out let me get the camera real fast and let me show you all the before and after it's a little bit splotchy i'm not gonna lie for lack of a better term but compared to the puddles that was there and what it could have became if it wasn't addressed this is pretty dang good it's now a smooth terrain for any vehicle to drive over and you watch i guarantee you in no time it'll blend right in with the rest of the surrounding ground it just takes it doesn't take too too long for you know weathering to start happening and for this stuff to kind of blend into the mold of what's around it if that makes sense i have a quick little spoiler for those of you that are watching this video so if you're seeing this ahead of time then congratulations but there are two goats i think pawpaw's goats are out back probably back over there somewhere eating pawpaw has two goats that are pregnant right now and i don't know if this is the first y'all are hearing it or not but if you haven't heard yet megan and i are going to be taking two of pawpaw's pregnant goats and bringing them over to the sanctuary later today so that they can have their babies at the sanctuary and we can have you know a few more bottle babies isn't that right trixie that's right trixie's gonna make good friends with the little baby goats that's a quick little spoiler for those of you that don't know yet i don't know if my dad or jamie announced that so this might be the first that anybody's hearing of it in which case you heard it here first and bennett will be here a little bit later i'm gonna need his help in transporting them because they're big they're pregnant and as y'all know i have a tour disc in my back so i can't be lifting too heavy of stuff so we'll find a way to get them over there a little bit later but that won't happen in this video because this video will conclude at about 4 p.m which is the 24 hour mark that's the whole point of this video is the first 24 hours and that whole thing will take place after four o'clock most likely so y'all be on the lookout in the near future for the video about our new adoptions so here we are 12:56, taking a little break from outside and we have just let hank in the house and that's our little daughter right there sweet loveland knows no fear she is fearless she just sniffed him a few times to make sure that he was a cat i guess and then now she's walking right past his tail which every cat knows is a big no-no she's very scatterbrained i don't know if y'all can tell like we really do think that she's mentally handicapped a little bit because if you know her story like i'm not even being like funny like in all seriousness she was oxygen deprived when she was little because when she was a kitten her mom abandoned her and her litter mates and and she's always just done things she seems very scatterbrained like she'll be doing one thing and then she'll forget what she's doing when we put on the cat tv to kind of hone the cat's reflexes like finnegan has very fast reflexes but her reflexes are really slow like slow slower than it yeah nutrient deprived slower than a cat's reflexes should be and 
like she, you can tell she's just she's just walking like very scattered brain you can tell it from her demeanor she walks right past Hank's tail which is not what you do with the animal that's kind of hostile towards you still but no point being is that she she's fearless she barely met Hank sniffed him and then she's like okay whatever I don't care going about doing her own thing all right guys i just got out of physical therapy i've been doing that to treat my back you know it's about 320 right now so it's close enough to the, to the 24 hour mark all i'm going to be doing until then is just driving so you get the gist of the video i think and so it's been a really awesome 24 hours that we've lived at, at the sanctuary we're really excited to see just how everything works going forward and with that said, I hope y'all enjoyed. Y'all be sure to let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you guys want to see. Hope you all have a very blessed day. And as I always say, your boy Elio.